Twinkle, you're here with us at the Gold Program for your first day of treatment. Yes. Uh, five treatments to come. And how do you feel today? Exhausted, sore, uh, waiting, and excited. Mm -hmm. And Twinkle, state your full name. My name is Twinkle Van Flee. And you're here with us today. Why? To find a relief. So one of the definitions of cure is to stop disease and make one healthy again. A definition of re remission is to um, help one be in remiss or in remitting of symptoms. Either of those will have me leaving happy. <laughs> gotcha. Yes, and they'll make us happy too. Yes. And. Twinkle, we know you've suffered for quite some time. Can you give us a rundown of when this began and, and your journey? January 26th of 2001, I was working, and I um, left my register at the time. I was a grocery clerk cashier just to retrieve bags that you um, bag groceries in. I bent down to pick them up. I snagged on a fire extinguisher and I swooped around it while still snagged to try to get undone. And I proceeded to trip, stumble, fly through the store, trying to grab onto air, um, candy, snack, Debbie treat stands, and I eventually landed on my head and my back. And um, I lost consciousness for a few seconds. And when I got to the hospital, it turned out that it was, uh, well, at that time it was diagnosed as a sprain strain, and it did take six weeks to get the um, actual diagnosis, which was a Liz Frank fracture or mid metatarsal separation. Mm -hmm. And so explain that to those listening what a mid metatarsal, metatarsal separation is. I tore the tendons, the ligaments from the bones between the second and third metatarsal of my right foot on the top of the right foot. Okay. It was followed up with surgery to put in a list Frank screw that stayed in for six months. I was non-weight bearing for an additional six months after that and then I did eight and a half months of really hard PT. My um, leg, my calf was, a, was smaller than my, my arm and uh, I had to build that back up. And um, Let's see, in 2003 I started, in 2003 it was Dr. Michael Yero, which is actually, uh, from what I understand, a colleague of Dr. Glaser, uh, is who diagnosed me. He was my physician and um, he sent me to pain management um, who verified the diagnosis and it's just been a crazy ride. So it's been how many years now? It'll be 16 January, or it will begin the 17th year, mm -hmm. in entering the 17th year. So today, what are you currently, what have you been diagnosed with? What is all the things that you all currently have? CRPS type 2, right foot, osteoarthritis, um, diverticulosis, I've had the gallbladder removals, I've had kidney stones, I have central sleep apnea and obstructive sleep apnea, narcolepsy, I have um, major depressive disorder, anxiety, um, levoscoliosis, degenerative disc disease, spinal stenosis, um, cervical radiculopathy, oh my goodness, <laughs> there's, I don't know how you remember all those names, more, I would have, okay, so, what type of medication, hepatic hemangiomas, liver, hepatic hemangiomas on the liver, I'm sorry, <laughs> no, I'm what, to... and so what current medications are you taking, I am taking lisinopril, I am taking Cymbalta, and I'm taking New Vigil, 
And, um, and what are these for? So the Cymbalta is for a dual um, depression and nerve pain. This, the um, Lisinopril is for high blood pressure. And the new, new Visual is for uh, sleep disorders, narcolepsy sleep disorders. It promotes wakefulness. Though it's not an amphetamine, it is, does promote wakefulness. Mm -hmm. And on occasion, did gabapentin. I restarted the gabapentin. Ibuprofen, that's it. That's. Up until this point, have you been, have you taken pain medications? Yes. Well, prior to February, I did. I had been on them the entire, one form or another, the, all, all, all through until February of this year. So have you taken a variety of pain medications for your CRPS? I started with uh, Lortab, well, um, hydrocodone to the Lortab to the high ones. I was on morphine, the MS Cotton, for three years at 15 times three a day. In 2009, when I started at the Compass Center for Functional Restoration, I went off of that uh, by choice, and I chose Suboxone, which is a combination of the buprenorphine and the naloxone. Um, one thing that I've been lucky for in that, with everything that's going on today, is that mine was prescribed specifically for chronic pain, so all of my bottles say that, whereas some people who have taken it as an alternative can't be treated because it suggests that there was addiction. So I, took, I did that for three years. Um, and the only reason why I changed was because I ended up with a surgery. You can't take a, um, an opioid with it, or you shouldn't. And so when I returned to pain management after the primary care and the surgery, I opted for Butrans patch, which is buprenorphine without a uh, transdermal. And that was the last medication I was on, so that would have been the last three years. And you chose not to take any more pain meds, I actually right? lost it. I actually lost tr um, medication um, by a combination of workers' compensation denials and delays, abrupt discontinuation, and um, um, losing my provider. Uh, and then after that, I opted to also give up the preventative medications, which was the high blood pressure, the cholesterol, and those other ones. And I just recently, about the past six weeks, no more than eight weeks, resumed or return to lisinopril and uh, Cymbalta. Mm -hmm. On a pain scale right now, where, where do you think you are? Um, probably about, uh, I try to be careful with this number. I'm a good eight. I am a good eight. W where is your pain mainly? Right now, it's in, uh, this, this is all, this is always, so I'm now I'm describing two areas instead of the whole thing. So I'm, it's worse up here than it's almost, this is distracting this. So it's a spine, it's my spine. So are you hurting in your back? It's the back, the neck, the collarbone, the shoulder, and all the way down my arm. Okay, what about your leg? My legs are fairly decent, except for about to here. Right here, I've got the burning and the throbbing and the you know, pins and needles and so on going there. But the rest are okay. I mean, like um, muscle, uh, visceral bone pain, but not the same symptoms that are going on in, in, my, in the right foot. So where is your CRPS directly? Is it completely to one region in your body or is are you full-blown um, I've never been diagnosed with full body I've had um, internal organ involvement 
I've had um, mirror. I, uh, I was told that I had mirror on this foot, and that was actually funny. My grandson tossed a bottle when he was a baby, and it just it landed. And six months later, I still had a contusion. It was the size of only about a pea, but it didn't want to heal either. And so and it actually mimicked or mirrored this other foot, even though this one really didn't have that kind of trauma. Mm -hmm. So it will discolor and do things sometimes too, but I really don't consider it, no, it, it's this side. Mm -hmm. It's this side. So mainly your right side of your body hurts more than your left side. Yes, that's, it goes all the way up and then into my right butt cheek. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, exactly. And then I've used my left side to compensate all these years, so I'm sure that's a problem too. What about headaches? I get the headaches on the right side, so it's going right down, or I should say behind the ear, down the neck, and then all the way down my arm, under my arm, back shoulder. I, basically the right side, the entire right side of my body. Mm -hmm. How you on a spinal stim? And I have a spinal cord <clears throat> stimulator. Um, since 2006. I've had one re revision. I had a revision in 2009 because it migrated up, my, came up. So it took the stimulation out of my feet and kind of brought it up into my chest. They went in, they tugged that down, added a second lead, and, um, and then I had the battery replaced in 2014 for the next nine years. So yes, I do. I think that's 16 electrodes and two leads. Does the stimulator seem to help? Yes. But in order for it to give the best um, results now, I have to have it up fairly high. But in order to walk with it that high, I could throw myself off my feet. So what I'll do during those moments is then I'll go sit down or I'll lay down, turn it up, give me a real good goose me up, and then bring it back down so that I can continue walking. So it is what gave me back the ability to walk better mm -hmm. and longer um, but over time it's a trick if I turn it off for two or three days it'll re-trick your mind and start working again our, our minds and our brains are smart it knows it's being tricked so you have to turn it off get through the few days of that extra pain turn it back on and then you get the disguise again mm. I'm, out, I'm also a Medtronic ambassador so I try to help people understand that the trial is the most important part of the whole process. If it's not, if it doesn't work during your trial, don't go on and get the permanent because it is invasive, but you have to pay attention to it. If you get the benefit, then you'll probably get the benefit again. And, but if you don't, no matter how much hope you want to put into it, it's not worth, it's not worth it. It wouldn't be worth it. Okay. I've heard too many people um, talk about how they failed. So you have to be really careful to pay attention to the trial. So let's talk about walking. Yes. How well do you walk? Um, I push it as much as I can. I take a lot of breaks. Today I've been down, up and down, as that's pretty much my daily. Um, a few times I laid down, took those little rests and naps. Um, I could not ever walk, let's say, a fair or an auction or anything like that without an assistive de device. And um, those are things that I don't often use, but to do something like that with my family because I stopped doing anything that more than a half a block of walking would, uh, I, I do need to, I will. That would require, require a lot of walking. Yes. It would just mm -hmm. impossible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it won't happen. How easily do you go up and down stairs? I can get up and down stairs, and I have learned to be able to get myself up and down those stairs. Sometimes I sit on the stairs and I'll wobble down them if I can't stay up, but I, I pretty much, um, I probably don't walk proper up and down the stairs. I, I do walk to the side. I kind of sidestep it up and down, kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sleeping, how well? Not, mm-hmm. Nope. Between the apneas and the all, I cannot get into a position. So I'm 
Um, oh my goodness. Do you find yourself up and down? I don't really get up and down at night, but I toss and turn all night. Is it hard to lay in one position yes. or is it impossible to lay in one position it's, for all night? Yes. Exactly. Or for a long period of time? Mm -hmm. yes. Hey Twinkle, um, what is their next advice for the next step in treatment for you? The next step at this point is another um, ep um, cervical uh, steroid injection in eight weeks. I just had one two days ago. As far as the lower extremity, I don't have anything right now. Mm -hmm. I don't have a provider for that right now. Um, so these past months, I've been trying to do everything that I can for myself in home PT. I use our kids' pool over the summer in the pool and tried to strengthen. Um, I don't know what else that, there, that could actually be done, done down here. Um, I already declined surgery in 2008 or so for a, a, a deep perennial nerve entrapment as well. And when I found out that that would take up to 18 months to heal, wow. just to heal, and what I already went through with the eight and a half months and, the, and, all, and all that for this one, mm -mm. so uh, that's where I'm at on that as far as my spine I don't know yet most likely if I can try to prevent surgery I will it would be a body brace that would be probably the next would be the, a brace to realign the curve have you had physical therapy yes did it help I've had the traditional in the very beginning I've had um, the compass center for functional restoration was part both. Now that physical therapy did help um, because it was uh, tailored to me and what I had versus somebody else that might have failed back syndrome or something else. It was, um, but, um, but not for, for my spine. The, this, the spine is actually, even though it's only recently diagnosed, has been a good three years that I've been dealing with it. But this past year, horribly. Any other type of treatments that you've, uh, acupuncture, massage? Um, I did the trial for the LLT and that is the low light laser treatment therapy. And I ha did have that up until the same um, person that did the LLT did the Bowen technique a therapy for me. And um, they both offered some some the bowen over the low low light offers some relief and even a sense of like maybe energy and it's also a certain kind of t you know touch light that so we'll see of all the treatments that you've had pain medications treatments all everything combined to help you with your pain what can you say has helped you the most? Oh boy, the spinal cord simulator, lower extremity, because that's all that's all that I had, and I I think the Boeing, though I only had probably five, maybe five or six sessions of that. I I, I think that's it. And one more thing before we we start here. Uh, how did you how did you hear about us, Twinkle? How I heard you about us? you uh, via Barbie Engel of the International Pain Foundation, who was um, I believe contacted by Dr. Glaser. I'm not entirely certain, and um, for somebody who might be interested, and she said her friend Twinkle probably would be, and she was right, and that's that's how you got here. Yes. Good. We're Thank glad you're you. here. Cool. I'm glad to be here. Very happy to be here. Okay. And Twinkle, you're aware and you give us consent that we do a before interview each day and an exit interview each day. So yes. before and after each treatment. Yes. And this will be published on the internet. Good. And that is okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Twinkle, okay. we're glad you're here and we'll talk to you after your treatment.
Thank you.